and welcome to this week's preview show where BBC Radio Servants Chris Temple is virtually alongside me as we look ahead to a big week for the Cherries. Here's what's coming up. We'll look back at that brilliant 4-1 win against Leicester on the weekend. We'll also be joined by Lloyd Kelly on the preview show. And finally, we will turn our attention to Wednesday night and that game at the Etihad Stadium. Well, we're going to start back at Sunday night and that superb win at Vitality Stadium. Chris, given the other results that came in over the weekend, that was an absolute must win, wasn't it? Total must win. And at half time, I think I, I put on Twitter after the game or said on the radio, if anyone at half time saw that coming, they're lying. Because at half time, I'm afraid it was googling Rotherham and, you know, we still might need the route to Rotherham for next season. But um, it was looking bad. Um, one shot. You know, a terrible, terrible goal to give away um, defensively after such a you know, solid performance in the previous game. And obviously Nathan Ake limping off as well. It was a, a pretty poor first half all round. But the tactical reshuffle, uh, the belief that they suddenly found from somewhere in the, the corner of the dressing room that had been gathering some dust uh, for the last few months. Uh, and it all came out and all went right. Of course, that bit of fortune with the the the, uh, the backside of Wilfred and Didi and Kasper Schmeichel. I'm not, still not sure what he was doing, trying to make that clearance. But uh, yeah, all of the pieces suddenly fell into into place in the in the jigsaw box, and um, the the result was. I mean, you'd have taken a scrappy one 0 off someone's backside, but as long as it was three points, and it turned out that actually the way they won in the end, I think just gives great forward momentum going into the City game, which we'll talk about a bit later. Uh, in terms of now that the the pressure's not off in the City game because they're still very much in a relegation fight, but it does mean they don't need to go to City and absolutely have to win like they did on Sunday. It was a, a crazy second half, wasn't it? You know, from 60 minutes, it was still very hard to sort of see a result coming. And then it was a crazy, I think it was 101 seconds, a penalty, two goals and, and a red card as well. It, it all went off, didn't it? Should have been another red card as well, if you ask me. I think indeed he should have been sent off because under the new law guidelines this year, if you're uh, the last man, it's a professional foul, but you don't make an attempt to win the ball inside the penalty area, uh, then you, you could get a red card. And there's no way indeed he's tried to play the ball. I think the refs almost feel sorry for him. I don't know what's going on there, um, but uh, he should have been sent off. Um, so aren't you, you know, you can't really kick out. Not too much argument with that. But again, you've seen those ones just sort of brushed off as, you know, a bit of a to-do afterwards. So he could easily have escaped with that as well. So I suppose one red card out of two. But yeah, all in all, I mean, Leicester unravelled. Um, I'm not sure what happened to them in the second half. But Dom Solanke, all of a sudden, you know, um, the second goal was a you know, brilliant footwork, by the way. I mean, it's, it'll get overlooked because it was late in the game and the game was already won, probably. Um, but, you know, a great little dance away from his man. A little finish with the outside of his foot underneath. Kasper Schmeichel as well. Uh, it was a fantastic finish. And the sort of finish of a guy who's full of confidence. So, you know... It's so good for him to have got those goals. And I feel slightly sorry for him that his first one, obviously his goal earlier in the season against Luton, of course, his first one got disallowed before he then went on to score later in the game. This one, of course, there was a red card and the skirmish immediately after the ball hit the net. So one day he'll score a goal that isn't followed by some sort of incident. But um, brilliant for him. Uh, with Joshua King's fitness, obviously a question mark. It's going to be great now. And I don't see really how you can probably drop Dom Solanke after that, um, going, to, going to City on Wednesday night. But all in all, you know, defensively, I mean, the new defensive shape with a back three of, of Rico uh, on the left of the back three. I can't remember ever seeing Rico play in the back three in his Bournemouth career. He might have done for a few minutes. People will correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't recall it. Um, Lloyd Kelly's only played three games there. All of a sudden, he's the, you know, he's the centre lynch, central linchpin up against Jamie Vardy. Steve Cook was sort of half fit, three quarters fit, came on and, and got through over half a game without really noticing it and defended really well. So that's encouraging. That's got half in his legs after that serious hamstring injury and just a bit of a niggle. So, and then Jack Stacey, I want to mention him as well, because on the left of sort of midfield slash wing back, I thought he was absolutely outstanding in the second half. You know, didn't actually see a lot of the ball, you know, per se, but did so much running. I couldn't believe how much up and down he was, um, helping out in defence, chasing across. He was at centre forward at one point. Uh, he was absolutely everywhere. And that's exactly the sort of commitment and, and uh, energy and passion that Eddie Howe will need. And he'll play again because Adam Smith's not going to be available for this game either. So he fully deserves to after that. Some really important halftime changes there, as, as you say, you know, the formation switch to three at the back with, with the win, wing backs. And Junior Stanislas coming, uh, coming on as well. He more than played his part, didn't he? Yeah, I didn't want to mention everyone there. I wanted to give you a chance to actually speak in this preview show rather than it just be a one-man band. You but yeah, Junior... Sorry. You're just tearing up all your questions and throwing them away. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah, Junior Stanislas, again, great. You know, brilliant that he's 
able to make a contribution. A shame he wasn't sort of fully fit to be able to start. And I think he was very carefully managed, really, because um, albeit it was a must-win game, and you think, well, do you want to play your best team from the start? Um, and if you can get an hour out of him, then brilliant. I thought David Brooks, you know, second half again was much better. And again, really interesting to see him in that central role. We've spoke about it, spoken about it before, sort of dropping into that number 10. He was much, much more able to affect the game there than being out wide on the right. So uh, be interesting to see where he plays against his old club. Um, and he, he got through 80 minutes, which is comfortably his longest contribution of this restart as well. So, but yeah, Stanislas, great. You know, cool head with the penalty. Ne I actually never thought he was going to miss. I know Schmeichel's a... Um, a very renowned penalty, penalty saver and Junior admitted after the game there had been a bit of mind games that Schmeichel had told him he was going to go down the middle as he was preparing for that uh, spot kick but Junior stuck to his guns and Casper double bluff didn't work on this occasion um, and then you know he, he definitely doesn't get the Johnny Evans own goal but again a great little turn and um, a significant deflection to, to make it three at an important time of the game so he's been a real factor um, played well at Manchester United which I hope will stand him in good stead to go to, to Manchester City and play well as well Probably the only negative to come from the evening, you mentioned it earlier, Nathan Ake hobbling off after 42 minutes. It was a, a shame shame that that happened, but such a crucial block from him to prevent what looked like a certain goal from Vardy. We could be sat here in two weeks talking about that block, keeping Bournemouth in the Premier League, because if that goes 2-0 at that moment, I don't think there's any way back. And I think that's Bournemouth relegated. As simple as that. I think it's that important a block. Um, what the future holds for Nathan, I mean, Eddie Howe said in his press conference ahead of this game, it's a minor groin injury. A minor groin injury, you know, that, that probably is three or four games. Um, so I would be doubting whether we'll see him again this season. And that probably means doubting that we'll see him again in a Bournemouth shirt, which would be such a shame. Of course, nothing's done and dusted. There's a very short turnaround this summer. Um, you know, he won't move for the sake of it just because he wants to leave Bournemouth. Because I think he's, I gather, he, you know, he's very happy on the South Coast and he loves the life down here. Um, but, you know, of course, if, if City come knocking, um, then it's probably quite a good game to not have to go and advertise his skills in this one, actually. But he's, um, he's, in, he's going to be in demand. So, fitting if it is to be his last touch in a Bournemouth shirt, whatever happens in terms of relegation or not this season, that it was a goal-saving block. Twice this season, he's injured himself blocking goals. He did it against Liverpool. He did his hamstring earlier in the season. And now he's done it against, uh, against Leicester as well. But... Brilliant contribution, fantastic player. Lots of people say the best ever player to play in a Bournemouth shirt. Again, it's hard to compare, obviously, relatively to those going back into the Ted McDougall era and, and earlier still, but um, certainly the best defender ever to play for Bournemouth. And I say that with John Williams. Uh, he won't be watching this because he can't turn the internet on, but he's bigger than me. And uh, just finally, we were sat here last week saying four points from these two games. It's a, a huge week, you know, Spurs and Leicester to come. They've got their four points and... They've got them, their confidence back up and they're in a much better position now, aren't they? Yeah, and how, how I see the bottom of the table is that it's, this City game is a free throw for me because I think everyone had drawn a line. The, the City game almost might as well not be happening in the, in the relegation fight, save for the goal difference. And Eddie Howe mentioned that as well this morning, that um, it's going to be tough to get a result. There's no one doubting that. That's not to say we're negatively throwing the towel in already and saying Bournemouth can't get anything because Southampton you know, had four shots to Manchester City's 26 and beat them 1-0 the other day at St Mary's. So you can, if you defend right, you can keep them out. It's possible. And City, you know, they've got an FA Cup semi-final coming up next weekend. They might, might rest a few. As I said to Willow earlier in the week, they might leave a few of the £80 million men and only bring in £50 million men instead. Um, so, yeah, they, they might change a few. Obviously, they've had the, the Champions League decision this week as well, which might have had a big off-the-field impact for them. Um, they're guaranteed to finish second, so nothing to play for in terms of you know, Premier League position or status, if you like. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what team they go with this weekend, and maybe a little bit more about that later. But I, I just see Watford as the key now, down the bottom, um, because they play City, don't forget, in their penultimate game, and then go to Arsenal in the last game. West Ham-Watford on Friday night, whatever happens in this City game on Wednesday, West Ham against Watford. Is Friday night. I think West Ham, from a Bournemouth point of view, if they win that game, that's a good result because Watford are the most catchable, both in goal difference and the fixtures that Watford have got left. I think we reflected on this in the, the last preview show. I think it's even more um, in evidence now. And actually, you look at it, Bournemouth might only, and I, I might look stupid saying this in a couple of weeks, but there's a possibility Bournemouth might not even have to win their last two games and could still stay up because if they could take four points... Um, and, and Watford managed to not beat City or Arsenal, lose both of those games, that could be enough. So it, there might not even be a must-win pressure 
on the uh, on the Southampton game, depending on how West Ham Watford goes. If Watford win that game uh, on Friday night at the London Stadium, then the, the whole circle changes again, if you like, because West Ham are so far ahead on goal difference that they're effectively a point further ahead. But it's all very complicated. Um, but the key thing is, Bournemouth are still in it. Still in it. And one man who is in form is Dominic Solanke. He was speaking to AFCB TV after that win against Leicester. So it's the 67th minute. We finally got ourselves back in the game. It's one all. And then tell me what happened. Um, yeah, I think after that, we just um, had a flood of confidence, really. Um, we went for it. We knew that we had to, to go all out. And um, yeah, we managed to, to keep going to the end and, and managed to get four. And so when the ball breaks to you in the box, it's not an easy chance. The angle's probably against you. What's running through your mind? What are you planning to do? And what, what did you manage to do? Um, I was just assessing the situation, really. I think um, Wolves probably helped me with his run. Um, took the centre back away and it, it freed up the space for me and I managed to get, get a clean shot off and yeah, managed to trickle over the line. And people always talk about, you know, you'd happily see it going up your backside. In that case, it trickled over the line. What, what was, that must have felt like a long time. <laughs> yeah, um, I think sometimes I've, I've been a bit unlucky at times and when it was just going over the line, I was thinking, is someone going to clear it or, or whatever, but it managed to go in and um, yeah, after that we managed to get a few more. Well, that was the goal scorer from Sunday evening, Dominic Solanke giving his thoughts. Now then, as you can see, we have been joined on the preview show by Lloyd Kelly. Lloyd, thank you for joining us. We've just been talking about that Leicester game, but how was it from your perspective? It was a, a much needed and, and brilliant win. Yeah, um, as you said, it was, a, it was a brilliant win for the boys. Um, it puts it in a a much better position going into the last three games. Um, obviously, it was a difficult first half. Um, been put up under a lot of pressure. Um, and then obviously making the, the tactical change and the formation change at half-time really helped us. Um, and the belief from the boys just kind of going out there and just leaving everything on the pitch um, really made a, a big statement for us in that second half. Um, so yeah, everyone's everyone's buzzing. Everyone's got a good feel, um, but um, you just got to kind of take it into the next game. Of course, it's going to be a tough one, but um, we'll do everything we can to kind of pick up as many points as we can. Well, you talked about those halftime changes, substitutions coming on, and, and obviously that formation change that seemed to almost work straight away, didn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, their formation um, caused us a lot of problems in the first half. Um, and when we made the changes um, for the second half, um, it kind of put us in a more comfortable position and um, kind of enabled us to kind of get a, get a bit more possession and um, be on the front foot a lot more and lock on to uh, many of their players, which caused them problems. Um, so it kind of reversed the whole... Um, flow of the game really so it did really work in our favour and that kind of fight that comeback in the second half those 101 seconds I think it was you know that's the determination and spirit that's going to be needed for the next three games isn't it yeah 100% um, but all of the boys want to go out there and work hard and we're going to leave everything on the pitch till the last ball's kicked um, so that's, that's all we can do, really. It's just there's three games to go. Just got to do everything we can to kind of pick up as many points and, and see where that takes us. We only can control what we can control, really. All the everything else that's going on, we, don't, we can't really focus on that and just make sure we focus on what we have to do. And just on a personal perspective for you, you've, you know, we've seen you playing at left back against Newcastle. You've Coming against Manchester United and, and Leicester and you've played centre back. What's that been like for you playing playing a couple of positions? You seem to have slotted in seamless, seamlessly there. Yeah. Um well during well, throughout my career, um I've been able to um uh, play various positions, obviously playing the left side centre half role, um, whether that's a back four or a back five playing the middle middle man of the back three um, and obviously of course left back um, has enabled me to kind of um, pick up 
various things playing in those different positions so if needed to switching into either left back into a centre half role I can comfortably comfortably do it um, so yeah it, it's been good that I've been getting a getting a experience in the Premier League playing those two positions but um, yeah I'm just looking forward to the last three games really and just physically for you, how are you feeling, obviously, having such a, a long time out with injury and now coming back and the games are coming in such quick succession? How are, how are you finding it and, and how are you coping? Yeah, as you said, the games are coming around really quick. Um, you're getting two days to recover, three days to recover until the next one. Um, but I think I've been coping with it quite well. Um, going off my first 90 minutes, um, of course, you're going to be a lot more fatigued, a lot more sore the following day. Um, but as the games have gone on and the more 90 minutes I've played, I've um, been adapting to it well um, and recovering a lot quicker. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm in a good place at the moment and um, hoping I can continue it for the, for the remainder of the season. And just finally, it's a a big game against Manchester City on Wednesday evening. It's going to be a really tough game. What's the mood in the camp ahead of that one? Yeah, as you said, it's going to be a really tough game for everyone. Um, we know what they can do. Um, we know what threats they have, the way they play. Um, but overall, the mood, the mood in the camps uh, on a high at the moment. Um, and all we can do is kind of take it into that game and, and see where that takes us. Um, obviously, it would be nice to kind of pick up as many points as we can, but of course, the position they're in and um, the way they've kind of been playing recently has been, it's been the Man City that everyone knows. Um, so, of course, it's going to be a tough one, but we'll do everything we can to kind of pick up as many points as we can. Well, I'm sure I speak on behalf of all the fans and wishing you and the boys the best of luck for that one. And thank you very much for joining us and, and for your time this week. Now then, thank you. that game with Manchester City is where our attention is going to turn to next. And Eddie Howe has been previewing that in his pre-match press conference. Winning breeds so many good and positive outcomes from it. that um, It was what we absolutely needed. Um, and you can see a lift in the players, a, a bounce in their step. Um, renewed confidence, renewed belief. Um, so we now go into three games left and we go in with a very into the, the three games with a very positive mindset. Josh King, we'll we see how he is, um, whether he makes the game. We've got Nathan Ake who will be out. Chris Meppen will be out. Simon Francis will be out. Adam Smith won't make the game. Yeah, unique challenge. I think Manchester City, um, very... Uh, Different game, really, from any other that you face in the Premier League. I think they've got unique qualities, an outstanding coach, a, a, a brilliant team. So um, we're going to have to be elevated to levels um, maybe that we haven't given this season to, to get a result. Dom's a very, <laughs> it's a very level, level, um, level lad in terms of his behaviour and, and how he conducts himself. I'm delighted for him just on a personal note that he's got that out of the way and he scored scored some very important goals for us now. Hopefully that's the start of, of many more to come. And I think his teammates are delighted for him as well. I think they shared in that moment with him. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking in his pre-match press conference. Chris, there's, a, there's no doubt about it that this is going to be one of the biggest tests of the season, isn't it? I think that's uh, one of your biggest understatements of the season, Zoe. Let me just re read off Manchester City's last few results. 5-0 against Brighton, 5-0 against Newcastle, obviously 1-0 against Southampton, 4-0 at home to Liverpool. I mean, even the last home results, Newcastle 5-0, Liverpool 4-0, Burnley 5-0, Arsenal 3-0. That's the last four home games. So no one's even managed to score there, let alone. I mean, even the champions got done 4-0. They're the best team in, in Europe and possibly in the world this season. So, yeah, it's a, it's an almighty ask. And that's why I mentioned earlier on about the goal difference being a factor, not because we're being negative or unrealistic, but because you look at teams that have gone there and got put to the sword. Um, Bournemouth have, in the last two or three meetings with Manchester City, got a bit closer and have been in the game for a long time. The home game, actually, earlier in the season was, was nearly fully a year ago now because it was right back at the start of the season. 
Harry Wilson scored just before half time, which brought it back to 2 1 um, after City had been pretty dominant in the first half. But Bournemouth tend to have sort of 25, 30% of the ball against Manchester City. It is going to be, you're going to need the luck, you're going to need everybody throwing in themselves in front of the ball. Defensive structure, you know, was pretty good against, uh, against Spurs, uh, and that's going to need to be very similar. Um, Leicester obviously only played Jamie Vardy up, but um, yeah, it's, you need everything to go your way. You need Aaron Ramsdale to save everything. Uh, and then, you know, who knows? You can potentially knit one on the break. Stranger things have happened. I just hope that there's maybe some distractions for City. I'm clutching at straws, but you're hoping that the semi-final or the Champions League or whatever might possibly distract them. But there's no doubt it's an almighty ask, but thank goodness for the Leicester result, meaning that, you know, defeat at the Etihad would definitely send Bournemouth down. Uh, now there's that fighting chance. You talk about, you know, their squad, they've got the likes of Sterling, they've got De Bruyne, they've got those players scattered throughout their team that, that are threats. Is there any chance that we could see any of them rotated? I know he didn't play, he didn't start De Bruyne on, on the weekend. Is there any chance he could do the same against Bournemouth? Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully they all get rotated and they play the reserves. Yeah, I mean, just looking at that game, as you say, the other day, um, Mares, Sterling and Jesus were the front three. Uh, De Bruyne did start but came off. Um, Rodri, you know, David Silva. Uh, just defensively, I think, just looking at some of the city's uh, city sort of press and listening to a couple of uh, podcasts on on Manchester City, defensively is there is there question marks? If you can keep them out, um, you know, you, you might have an opportunity. They're playing the relatively inexperienced Eric Garcia at centre half, obviously alongside Laporte. Um, the fullback positions, Mendy's a, a character. Kyle Walker's not getting any any younger, but you know, the, I think that is the even though I heard someone starting to question Edison the other day, which is. Seems to be, you know, clutching at straws for me. With again, with um, you know, a fantastic goalkeeper. That even a a one percent drop in your standards, suddenly your people are, are sort of starting to question you. So that's the only area of the city team that you'd say is maybe not as world class as their attacking e uh, element. So depending on who they rotate, you know, even if they rotate up front, their um, the bench the other night was, you know, pretty inexperienced. I mean, obviously, you know, Phil Foden, David Silva came off the bench as well, but there's some other young names on there that aren't that familiar. So, and that was in the, the Brighton away game. So, again, hopeful with a bit of rotation. If, if De Bruyne doesn't fancy it, perfect. You know, have a night off, Kevin. Raheem, if you've got something better to do, no problem. Go and do it Wednesday night. We would be delighted. And uh, I want to talk about that Southampton game as well. I know, obviously, Southampton were at home when they played Manchester City, but can Eddie Howe and, and Bournemouth be looking at that thinking, you know, if, if Southampton can get something, then there's no reason why perhaps we can't as well? Yeah, why not? I mean, Saints have followed it up with a great, obviously, last ditch draw away at uh, Manchester United on, on Monday night as well. So they're going to, you know, look at them coming to the vitality at the weekend. They're, they're playing well. Um, playing well mainly away from home. That City result actually was a bit of a freak in terms of their home performances this season, which haven't been great. So, yeah, that'll be a, a great encounter, albeit with no fans at the Vitality on Sunday. But, yeah, I mean, that was a classic case of you just, just got to get everything right defensively, have a little bit of luck. Saints defended really well. You know, Ralph Hasenhutl got the structure spot on. Uh, you could see they were all absolutely launching themselves at everything. Uh, and, then, you know, that's got to be controlled as well. You can't just be flinging yourself around, but you do need to be blocking absolutely everything. It was one-way traffic for you know the last 15 minutes of the game, probably. City had shot after shot, but none would go in. Um, and that's just, you know, if you're going to beat City, you do need to turn in a performance like that. Nobody rolls City over, certainly not outside of the, the, the top three or four anyway. So, yeah, I think they will, they will take some belief from that Saints performance that it can be done if you get everything absolutely defensively spot on. And in terms of our injury news, you know, no Adam Smith, Eddie Howe's already said that. Joshua King will wait and see. Nathan Ake, he said, is going to miss the game. But again, with Dominic Slanky playing well up front, Steve Cook coming in on a, on Sunday, there's there's still options for, for Eddie Howe in the side. Yeah, so I, I would you'd expect them to go back to the sort of four that started in terms of uh, the, the formation anyway, with Rico at left back and Stacey at right back. And it will have to be St uh, Kelly and Steve Cook at the heart of the defence, which will be uh, another new defensive partnership. I mean, I've lost track of how many central defensive or, or back four partnerships there have been this season, because when you put in the fact that, you know, Francis and, and Mepham and Jack Simpson obviously has played as well and Cook and Ake and Kelly. So now Cook and Kelly from the start will be another new combination. Uh, because Nathan Ake obviously hardly ever misses a game. So, uh, yeah, I think it's really useful for Steve Cook that he got those 45 minutes in his leg just, in legs just to ease himself back in the other day, because he'll certainly be, be tested against City, that's for sure. Um, concentration's a, a big issue uh, for the Cherries to be wary of. Um, I think Junior Stanislas will come back in, because, again, he, he played so well away at United, came on and made that contribution the other day. Um, Dan Gosling didn't have a great day the other day in the first half. Dan Juma the same. So, 
Um, you know, Lewis Cook came on, he'll have st staked to claim for, for a place as well. Um, so a couple of interesting ch sort of choices in midfield. Um, if Joshua King's fit, I mean, he's a great outlet, Joshua King, away from home because he can keep the ball, he can stretch a defence as well. Um, but where do you fit him in? Because Callum will play. Dom Solanke doesn't really deserve to get dropped after those couple of goals. But Eddie Howe, as well as being loyal, he also is a, a horses for courses man and will play teams play a team depending on the uh, the specific strengths of an opposition. So it'll be interesting to see what he does there. But yeah, I think back four picks itself. Stanislas in, Solanke, it'll be tough to drop. Well, we'll certainly wait and see. You can listen to free live commentary of that game at Manchester City on AFTV TV with Chris and Willow. And we'll have all the post-match reaction on our website for you too. That's all we've got time for today. Join us on the weekend as we look ahead to that game against Southampton. Bye for now.